Hey there, BookTube. Noah. Everyone who reads and must converse is the channel. Thanks for stopping by again. And this is another installment in the author spotlight. Authors that I love and authors that you should read. This one is all Philip K. Dick. This is one that I'm going to show first and talk about last, to tell you the truth. Because this is an amazing volume, is it not? The Exegesis of Philip K. Dick, um, edited by Pamela Jackson and Jonathan Lethem. Very awesome. So, Philip K. Dick, many people will be uh, familiar with at least some of his work. A lot of his stuff has been adapted into movies and series at this point. Blade Runner is uh, an ad adaptation of Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. And I'll leave link a uh, link a video by my boy Ramsey at Rajathon. He just read it, and uh, he did a, a great job talking about that book. Uh, Man in the High Castle is a recent series, I think, on Amazon Prime that they had done. And Minority Report is a pretty cool movie. Uh, that, that lets you really see some very Philip K. Dick elements to it. Um, the narrative is kind of like a mystery, uh, a, a murder mystery. But then you have all this, you know, the setting and, and other elements to the narrative that are so interesting and awesome that, you know, just, just, are, are just, are just part of it. You know, Philip K. Dick was chock full of ideas. He was a, a crazy prolific writer. Um, he wrote over 40 novels in his lifetime. Uh, I think one year he wrote like four novels in one year. You know, he was a serial writer for much of his life. And, and I think he gets kind of a bad rap for that, for writing things uh, that are kind of these just kind of genre sci-fi. But his stuff is anything but typical sci-fi. He, he is very prophetic, and he is very much um, a, an amazing writer. So uh, just to show a couple of ones that I like a lot, Martian Time Slip, this, uh, this edition. I like these editions a lot. Who did this? Uh, Vintage. And then the Sci-Fi Masterworks put out a lot of his his uh his novels the three stigmata of palmer eldritch so matthew at mulberry uh mulberry book club did a review of this book it's pretty good the book is is very good uh and and you know not 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 one of philip k dick's you know i wouldn't put it like in his top five or anything but um, it's, it's a very interesting one for sure. And I'm going to kind of bust on Matt a little bit. It's just, it's just, you know, people like what they like and it's all good. But, you know, there's a, there's a drug use in this book like there is in a lot of Philip K. Dick novels. Now, not drug use like, you know, a junkie. But drugs being part of a societal structure, kind of like um, Brave New World, something like that. Now, Aldous Huxley, Brave New World. So in this book, the, the society that they're on is on a different planet. And they all take a certain drug that is a hallucinogenic drug. And they can actually ha all take part in each other's hallucinations. So they have collective hallucinogenic experiences. And the, the, the novel actually blurs at some points to where you don't know whether you're in an hallucination or you're in the real world or, you know, what is the real world? Um, Philip K. Dick was prolific at short stories. Here's a uh, minority report is a short story that he wrote and got adapted into that movie. And there is a short story called We Will Remember It For You Wholesale. And that is a short story that got adapted into the Total Recall movie. But, you know, both movies, I guess. But, um, 
when it comes down to it, Philip K. Dick could write a short story and it could be, you know, a whole series or, or at least a multi-part movie. I've touched on Ubik in my, um, in my, in, in a couple of previous videos, just kind of touched on it. Now, Ubik is a very, uh, very much one of my top five novels by Philip K. Dick. So if there's a standalone uh, that, that you might want to pick up off a of suggestion, I would say Ubik is just right where you want to go. It'll give you a really good idea of what Philip K. Dick's all about. Either this or Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. Um, either of those are, are perfect for starting off. If you like it, go for it. If you don't like it, well, now you know. You know? Um, Philip K. Dick is not for everybody. And that's where, you know, uh, Matthew over at Mulber Mulberry Book Club said he didn't like the drug use in, uh, in Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldridge. But... There's another book that he uh, <laughs> that he reviewed not long after that one that was actually about a heroin addict and and his depravity and how you know bad uh, of a situation he got into and he said that he he really enjoyed the book and really loved it so you know it just goes to show uh, when it comes down to it uh, it's not the content itself it's how it's presented and what kind of way you take, you know, that kind of thing. Drug use, uh, any kind of drug use as a norm for society might have a problem with that. Uh, but drugs as far as being, you know, a, a common vice that some people um, have to deal with in their life in an addictive way, uh, no, no problem kind of going towards that kind of thing. Now, it could be argued as well that in our society there's widespread common common drug use as well. Uh, coffee, you know, <laughs> I have my coffee. I have some coffee sitting over there on the dresser. You know, cigarettes, alcohol, uh, marijuana is very prevalent, and uh, you know, a host of other uh, pills and drugs that are not uh, actually uh, classified as drugs because you get them by prescription. So. Mm. Not trying to get into that. Now, one um, book that was published posthumously is Radio Free Albermuth. Now, this book is very, very, very strange. Now, I want to uh, show this and then put it to the side for a second because what we're going to talk about next is just that it's a picture that's on that cover. There is a satellite, you see? And that satellite is not a man-made satellite. It is an otherworldly satellite. Alien, it could be argued. But that is what Philip K. Dick termed Valus. Vast, um, what, let's see. Let's see if I can just pull it out real quick. Um, I, I, I don't want to get it wrong, but I think I can get it right just, uh, just off of it, but I want to make sure I get it right, so. This is the first, okay, so at the end of Philip K. Dick's life, he had a, um, a, a, a spiritual experience. Valus is vast, active, living intelligence system. A vast, active, living intelligence system. That is what Valus is. And Valus comes from an experience that Philip K. Dick had later in his life. Now, he was um, on 2-3-1974. Philip K. Dick had his wisdom teeth, some impacted wisdom teeth removed. And he was in a lot of pain. And he was sitting in his apartment and listening to Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. And the pain was so excruciating that he said he was listening to the sound in between, the silences in, be in between the music of the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club album. And he was waiting for some uh, pain medicine that was coming, uh, being delivered by a nurse. And he was just sitting there waiting in an excruciating amount of pain and uh getting to this kind of a meditative state. You know, there's nothing else to focus on 
when you're in that amount of pain, you're forced to uh, kind of hone your attention and your concentration, which is uh, what a meditative state is actually doing. So he was, he was sitting there in that kind of pain, and there was a doorbell, a door ring. And he gets up, he goes to the door, and the nurse is there with a bag and hands him over his bag. And he looks at the uh, necklace of the nurse, and what is it? The Jesus fish, the little fish symbol. Everybody knows the, the Jesus fish. And it's a very simple symbol, and it was on a chain, a little gold uh, uh, fish. And at that point, he said that there was a beam that came down from where we don't know, from another planet, from another star system, from a, uh, an, a, a satellite, whatever, a beam came down in directly into his brain and downloaded for what seemed like hours and hours and hours. Information, information, information. He, he went through so much and he said he accumulated so much information in that time that um, he, he couldn't even make sense of it all. After this download, as he describes it, happens... He, he, he comes out of it, and he's right where he was. Maybe a couple of seconds have passed. And he asked the, 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 the nurse, what is that, what is that a necklace represent? This is what uh, was the catalyst for this experience for him. And she said that it was a symbol of the hidden secret Christians um, in the first century of uh, Christianity when Christianity was still being persecuted by the Romans and so he gets his package he leaves and he goes to the back to what he's doing takes pain medicine probably pretty quickly after that and spends the rest of his life um, writing an exegesis now he wasn't trying to write an exegesis what he was doing was trying to make sense of his experience. And that is what this and this, this is the first, uh, the first attempt at um, putting out some of this material. A lot of it was letters. A lot of it was his own notes, notebooks. The Pursuit of Valus. This is a, a a worthy try. Lawrence Sutton is who did that. But it's it's very much lacking. And this came out, uh, the, the exegesis of Philip K. Dick. This was put out, um, let's see, it is 2011. He wrote, he wrote novels for the rest of you know his his time while he was writing all this and trying to codify and, and make sense out of his experience he wrote a scanner darkly that is another uh, book that got changed into a movie he wrote radio free Albermood. he wrote a trilogy of books called Valus Valus itself which is amazing and I'm sorry I don't have it to show because I have a buddy borrowing it and then he wrote Valus the divine invasion and the transmigration of Timothy Archer. So, um, what it does is Valus is an amazing work. Valus is is semi autobiographical. The main character is, an, is named Horse Lover Fat, and he's had the experience that Philip K. Dick has had, and he's trying to make sense of it in the book, and. Philip K. Dick is actually a character in the book as well, because he is horse lover fat, and Philip K. Dick's friends, and this kind of thing. It is, it is a wild ride. Uh, it is an, an awesome exploration of paranoia, and am I crazy, or am I, you know, getting to some kind of enlightenment st state, or something like this. It's, it's an amazing work, but... 
The, the three novels, Valus, The Divine Invasion, and The Transmigration of Timothy Archer, are all written from the point of view, from the vantage point of his experience. The Divine Invasion is an actual story about the second coming of the Godhead, the second coming of Christ here on earth. This is awesome. Totally and completely awesome. And Ursula K. Le Guin writes on the back, the fact that what Dick is entertaining us about is reality and madness, time and death, sin and salvation. This has escaped most critics. Nobody notices that we have our own homegrown Borges and have had him for 30 years. Um, it's great. This is uh, a lot of fun. And the, uh, the Trent, or, I'm sorry, this one, the, D the Divine Invasion. This one is great. One of my favorites of all time um, as far as Philip K. Dick's fiction work is concerned. Very cool. The Transmigration of Timothy Archer I didn't take to so well. Um, Philip K. Dick in his Exegesis says that it's the greatest novel that he's ever written. So I think I need to revisit it, but I, I, I you know, I read it. I know. And, uh, it just didn't, it didn't really strike me like that. Now, uh, this volume is something completely awesome. And Philip K. Dick it, it was, a, was a wild, a wild uh, writer. So be prepared when you go into something like uh, this, because, or, or any of these final novels, because he's completely uh, untethered. He, had, he is at the height of his power and completely untethered. And the, uh, the Valus is awesome. And the, the, uh, the Divine Invasion is just like, you know, I, 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 can't, I can't say enough about it. I'll do a little review of, of it if people are interested. And I'll review any of these works. But I wanted to just kind of touch on Philip K. Dick as a whole. Um, what he says about his experience on February 3rd, 1974, that's when it happened. And Philip K. Dick uh, died less than 10 years later, having uh, tried to put this thing down for the rest of his life in notes and letters to people. One day, the contents of my mind moved faster and faster until they ceased being concepts and became per perceptions. I didn't have the concepts about the world, but I perceived it without preconception or even intellectual comprehension. And then it resembled the world of Ubik. As if all the contents of one's mind, if fused, became suddenly alive, a living entity of itself, which took off within one's head on its own, saw in its own superior way, without regard to what you had ever learned or seen or known. The principle of emergence, as when non-living matter becomes living, as if information itself, thought concepts, when pushed to their limit, became metamorphosized into something alive. So it is living information. That's what he saw. The vast, um, active, living intelligence system, that is his name for God, or the all, or the, you know, the, the underlying information that is at the back of all this. And so uh, it's, it's, it's very, very, very interesting. So in Valus, Valus is a semi-autobiographical work, but ultimately a fiction. Um, in Valus, they go and see a movie. And in that movie, it gets picked apart as some, some uh, director that is in touch with Valus, where Valus wrote this movie, beamed it into the director and the writer's head, right? And so uh, that movie that they go see in Valus is Radio Free Album Move. So this book is, um, is perfect as far as a cap. It says, uh, Richard Lupoff says here, it seems to me that the master volume that established the relationship among Valus, the Divine Invasion, and the Transmigration of Timothy Archer 
authenticates the other three books and makes a, ho a coherent quartet of them and itself. It definitely is a good book and an important one. So, like I said, published posthumously, but um, just because his uh, his publishers didn't want to, you know, go for it, even though, you know, he was, he was, you know, everybody knew Philip K. Dick at that point and probably could sell whatever he wrote. But it's just, it's just wild. So, I hope I've given y'all some, uh, some interesting ideas, turns you on to Philip K. Dick, and um, I'll leave you with a picture of him right here. There he goes. And thank you very much, BookTube, for joining me. And hope you all have a pleasant day. Bye-bye.